my friends and fellow Betsies. Comfort shows. We all have them. Who needs them? They're just like you and me. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's so dumb. I, it's such a dumb reference. Seriously, is there anything better than comfort shows? They're the TV shows that we go back to whenever we need to laugh or cry or just get some catharsis juice out of our systems. Admittedly, I don't watch a lot of TV because uh, it's hard to watch TV in college. Yes, I do watch a four hour long D&D stream once a week. I don't see the irony in this. However, I do have comfort shows that I tend to seek out clips or singular episodes from when I'm at school and having a rough time, or if I'm at home, I will just try to find some time alone that I can watch them. And since we've all been sort of exhausting our comfort materials in the past couple years, and I'm trying to focus on things that spark joy this VEDS, I figured that I would share with you my top 10 sort of kind of lists are hard when you have as bad of anxiety as I do comfort shows. Number 10, NCIS. People who've known me for a long time know that I did go through an NCIS phase in middle school. Yeah, an NCIS phase. I, 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 I know. But it's easy to get wrapped up in the charm of the show, even now when my feelings on the military and the police are very different than they were about a decade ago. The characters are just fun and engaging, and I'm always a sucker for a good mystery. Number nine, Star Trek Voyager. There's a lot of Star Trek TV, and a lot of it is really good. Logically, I know that Next Generation is the best of them in terms of, you know, quality and consistency and character and all of that good stuff. But I still keep coming back to Voyager. See, Voyager goes 100% with every idea it has, whether it's dramatic, comedic, existential, that shit. <laughs> really smart, really dumb, it doesn't half-ass it ever. And yeah, that means that it's kind of tonally dissonant a lot of the times and you never know exactly what you're gonna get but you also never know what you're going to get and whatever you get is going to be the most of what it can be. I love just turning an episode on and not knowing what I'm gonna get. Am I gonna get a heartwarming story of the doctor developing feelings? Am I gonna get a wild time where Seven of Nine fights Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yes, that actually did happen. I'm not lying to you. I would never make something like that up. Are we gonna get Harry Kim getting trapped in Beowulf? Because that happens. Or are we gonna get like a super in-depth, deep, dramatic dive into the way that the bullying in her childhood still fucking traumatizes Bellana? All of those are equally as possible in the mind of the Voyager writers, and that is just so fun. Voyager is a roller coaster, but it's a fun one, and I keep wanting to get back on it. Number eight, Pushing Daisies. This one was gone way too soon. This show has everything. Pie, murder mystery, pop-up books, pining musical numbers. There's so much crazy shit that I had to check my script because this has everything. The cast, awesome. Absolutely iconic. So many icons. If you don't know, Pushing Daisies is a murder mystery romance modern fairy tale about a pie maker named Ned who uses his ability to raise the dead, uh, lots of fine print included in that, to solve mysteries. And he revives his childhood sweetheart along the way and it's 
just wonderful, strange adventures from there. It only lasted for two seasons, but they're two of the most delightful and unique seasons of television that I have ever come across. Number seven, Murder, She Wrote. Given my love of murder mysteries and iconic stage actresses, this can't be that much of a surprise. If you somehow missed out on all 12 of the seasons because, I don't know, you never stayed up late in the hotel and had nothing on or never had grandparents, don't worry, I didn't have them either. It stars the iconic Angela Lansbury as Jessica Fletcher, a former English teacher turned murder mystery author who is able to solve real life murder mysteries that keep popping up whenever she's around. Now, not every mystery is great. In fact, Murder She Wrote is kind of notorious for being real weird about how they do their mysteries. But that does not mean that J.B. Fletcher is not one of the great pop culture detectives up there with Poirot and Columbo and I wrote other things but I'm trying not to look down too much. Sherlock Holmes. I forgot Sherlock Holmes. And the universe of the show, especially the main town of Cabot Cove, is just delightful. Number six, Animaniacs. When we were little, we had this one Animaniacs VHS. It was called Spooky Stuff, and it had vampires and death and devils and witches and all of that good spooky stuff. And I fell in love with the show. I mean, I guess I had good taste. It's one of the greatest cartoons ever put to television. It's just... I mean, it's Animaniacs. Everybody loves it. It got the reboot, which I do have opinions on. If you guys are interested in hearing about that, let me know. But yeah, it's just genuinely great. Number five, Food Network Challenge. Listen, y'all, I love Food Network Challenge, especially the old cake episodes. Cake artists were given eight hours to create absolutely insane cakes. The drama of this show was insane. Like people were burning themselves in sugar and cakes were toppling over and things were falling and things were breaking all the time. It was wild. And the best part is people kept coming back for it. So you kept seeing the same people and it was like a recurring cast of characters. And that really helped the investment be even stronger because you knew exactly who they were and so you loved them or you hated them and that made it even more fun. Also, rest in peace, Carrie Vincent. Number four, The Electric Company. Look, 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 we all knew it was coming. This show and this fandom were essential to me growing up. It's far from brilliant, TV, even in terms of educational TV, but the campiness more than makes up for that. Seriously, if you're looking for a good time, get some nice takeout, get yourself a drink, put this on, it's a wild time, you'll have a blast, trust me. You will be confused, that's not the alcohol, it's a great time, you'll have so much fun. You really can't see Mary Berry at all. <laughs> You can see Paul pretty okay, though. That's kind of funny. Number three, The Great British Baking Show. I mean, yeah, this is like the definition of a comfort show. It's just nice British people baking nice food in nice scenery with nice little animals and nice classical music. It's, I don't see many things being more comforting to people than this. I. Everyone likes this show, I feel like, because it's just happiness. Number two, Face Off. This could not be more different than most of the other shows on here. If you don't know or remember Face Off, it was sci-fi's special effects makeup reality competition show. It was, it was bonkers and gory and weird and just bizarre all times and I fucking loved it. 
the ideas that they came up with were insane. And it was always fun seeing who they'd get to be a guest judge. Because, you know, sometimes you get Doug Jones, sometimes you get Michael Dorn, sometimes you get Paul Rubens. You never know. Usually when I get home for a break, I end up just watching, like, at least a season's worth. Just because it's fun and it's so different from everything else. And it, it just holds a special place in my heart. And if you had paid attention to my setup, you might have been able to guess that number one is Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Do I need to explain? It's Mr. Rogers. He always taught us that we were good and, you know, we had things to learn and ways to improve ourselves, but we were worthy of love as is. And Honestly, I feel like I need that just as much as a college student, if not more than what I needed it as an elementary school student. Honestly, I think we all desperately need some more of Mr. Rogers in our lives. Of everything on this list, he's the one that's most likely to make me cry because it's just so purely and utterly good. So those are 10 of my comfort shows. This isn't a complete list, there'd be a lot more cooking shows if it was, but I think it covers a lot of the bases, you know, murder mysteries, cooking, reality TV, kids TV, PBS kids, the things people would expect from me. Um, but what about you guys? Do you have comfort shows? Do you like any of these shows? Would you recommend me something based off of this list? to hear from you.